It's Jonathan. Jonathan Van Clute was born and raised in California's Silicon Valley at the very dawn of the personal computer. He grew up with computers never knowing a day in his life without one. Jonathan rounded out the scientific with the creative, composing music at age four. Yeah. And counting, wow, age four, nice. He still has the sheet music, that's awesome. And continued to make music into adulthood. Jonathan founded a video post-production company and explored nothing down strategies in the real estate market until he finally returned to his computer roots working full time on the internet, perfecting techniques to analyze niches, affiliate market, develop product, build lists, and sell to customers online. Anybody wanna to sell to customers online, right? Delving heavily into pay-per-click marketing using Google's AdWords, Jonathan saw a real lack of effective and easy to use tools for generating properly content optimized landing pages for PPC marketers like himself. Jonathan's first product, LP Gen was a smash success, selling over 100 copies in the first 12 hours, and of course, hundreds more ever since. This July, he demonstrated his own affiliate marketing expertise by winning the Top Affiliate Challenge Web Reality Show. He's part of Ken's team, working under the leadership of Ken and as a member of the constantly winning the Pepper Jam Network team, Jonathan personally generated, this is cool, over $40,000 in just two weeks. $40,000 in two weeks. And took the title of top affiliate. Jonathan practices the art of internet marketing every day and is proud to help others to do the same through his tools and teaching. Welcome Jonathan Van Clute. Thanks, Alicia. Thank you. All right. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I am an affiliate rock star and I can hit bang. Yeah. All right, so, uh, wow, what an introduction, that was cool. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, you know, you, you kind of know a little bit about uh, who the heck I am. Um, how's everybody doing? It, it, how's the energy level around here? Are we all surviving day three? Right? I mean, day three, I know these things are long, everyone's up all night long. Uh, you know, it's, I, I crashed last night with a brutal headache, so, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a long weekend. So, uh, I understand if, if people aren't quite all there, but, uh, this is going to be a ton of fun. Uh, I love talking about this stuff. So uh, I'm a little bit like a runaway freight train. So you kind of get me started down the track on this stuff, and I will just go and go. So uh, I'm going to do my best to rein it in. I've had to cut out all kinds of stuff from this presentation. I could not possibly squeeze even a fraction of what I do and what I know about affiliate marketing and everything else into an hour. Um, but I'm going to do my best. So if anybody needs to you know, get a better view of the screen or move around if the sun angles wrong, whatever, feel free to, to adjust if need be so you can take some notes, because I'm going to try to share a lot of different URLs and tools and, and you know, ways of doing things and, and a lot of the stuff that I, that I do and I use. Um, all right, um, have any of you ever failed, by the way? At, any, at anything? Yeah. That's weird, I haven't. Because I've managed to learn something from everything. So I would wager that none of you have ever failed either. So just keep that in mind. There's really no failure unless you just decide, eh, well, forget it. Thorn in the towel. There's no failure. I declared bankruptcy in 2002, and my partner and I right now are dealing with the tail end of uh, a dozen foreclosures from the real estate market that completely went to hell in a handbasket on us last year, and everything crumbled. Whatever. That doesn't stop me. That hasn't even slowed me down. If anything, it's accelerated me. So just keep that in mind. There is no failure. Trust me. All right. Uh, man, this is cool. Obviously, I was on Top Affiliate Challenge. How many of you actually watched Top Affiliate Challenge? Let me flip that around. How many of you have no idea what Top Affiliate Challenge is or was and never heard of it till now? <laughs> All right, cool. Well, if you want to see it, topaffiliatechallenge.com. Thor Schrock, who was sitting up here, now has run and hid. I don't know where he went, but um, he's, oh, now he's in the farthest back corner of the table. So anyway, Thor Schrock put that on, pulled off an amazing job. Uh, it was a web reality show. Let's take 12 people, throw them into a hotel for two weeks in the middle of Lincoln, Nebraska, where there's nothing else to do but affiliate market. Uh, at least that's how I found it, and, uh, and see what happens. And um, I ended up coming out the winner on that. Um, my revenue alone turned out to be 40 something thousand dollars um, in two weeks. Now, quick point about that. Whenever somebody throws out revenue numbers, please ask them if that's gross or net. Because I hear numbers all the time from people. And I always say, so, so is that gross or net? 
And most of the time, it's gross. You know, people talk salary. Oh, I make one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. No, you don't. Come on. What do you What do you take home? What do you keep? So I spent about thirty thousand dollars to get that. Forty something thousand dollars. All things considered, though, thirty grand, forty something grand, two weeks, ten, thirteen thousand dollars or so net profit. Do we? I'm I'm okay with that. I, I'll do that over and over as often as I can, right? So, just ask about net, please. Um, I've actually been a professional, prof pro not a professional speaker, clearly, uh, but I have actually been a professional marketer, believe it or not, since 1989. And uh, for those of you keeping score, that means that I was about 15, 16 years old. And uh, what I mean by that is that I developed my first info product in 1989. I did not call it an info product. I didn't even know the concept of an info product until the early 2000s. But it was, in fact, my first info product, and uh, it was. Um, hello, come on. Oh, there it is. Ah, this is just being slow. It was music. These were my first three albums. I did these during high school, freshman, sophomore, junior year, basically. It's pretty much what I did in high school. I did my music. Um, that was my passion. That was all I was interested in. My friends were, come on, dude, let's go party. Whatever. Yeah, got some songs to write, you know. So um, that was my thing. I wrote, I wrote music. But to me, it was an, an automatic natural thing as I had to sell it. It, it was not just. You know, I, I just make music because I like to make music. It, it just was an automatic thing. I made it, and I packaged it, and I sold it. It just—I don't know why I had that drive, but it was just an automatic reflex. And you know, first one was on the left, second one was in the middle, third one on the right. You can see there's a bit of a progression. By the time I got to the third one, I was—you know—I'd outsourced my graphic creation to a kid in school. Said I need a cover. Had him do it. Paid him like 25 bucks or something like that, and he made the cover. And uh, I had a, a professional duplication house duplicate the cassettes and shrink wrap them, and you know, manufacture the product. And then I went and sold them. I had 100 copies, and I sold every single one of them, seven bucks a piece, one by one. There was absolutely no effective means of mass distribution for me at that time. I couldn't burn CDs. Um, you know, there was no internet, no MP3. So my distribution range, my reach, my customer reach was pretty limited. Although, strangely enough, one of my tapes ended up in Germany. And a friend of mine who knew a DJ over there told me that I won an independent artist comp contest in Germany. And, and I got a CD as a prize. It was really weird. I don't know how that came about, but you never know where things are going to go. Um, but anyway, so I ended up in, in video post, professional audio and video through most of the 90s, and uh, opened my own post production facility at the end of, end of the 90s. Rode that into the early 2000s. Most of my customers were corporate and, and high tech in the valley, obviously, where I live, Silicon Valley. And uh, that crashed and burned badly when the rest of the tech sector crashed and burned badly. So um, in 2004, I discovered this thing called internet marketing. And very quickly after that, discovered this thing called affiliate marketing, which I just sort of took to, you know, duck to water, whatever you want to call it. It just made sense to me. I just loved it. Um, and uh, you know, I've done that ever since. Although I've also dabbled. I mean, I've built AdSense sites. I've done SEO. I've done PPC. I've done uh, you know, product creation, webinars. I've done at least some of just about everything. But a few things have really stuck, and I've, I've grabbed hold of and run with. So I haven't had an actual job, worked for anyone else in a job capacity in a good 10 plus years. And of course, largely thanks to affiliate marketing, I've, uh, I will never have to worry about that ever again. I'm totally, completely certain of that. Um, Ken brought me in to talk about affiliate marketing. Um, I'm coming at this primarily from the standpoint, of course, of being an affiliate, because that's what I do. But I also own products. I have my own products that I've created. And so I have affiliates for those products as well. That's a really important thing to think about. Don't think that, well, I'm not an affiliate marketer. I'm not interested in being an affiliate marketer. I have my own product, whatever. You need affiliates. Trust me, they, they are the biggest leverage you have available to you as a product owner and product creator is affiliates. Get them out there evangelizing for you. It's huge. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, you, you know, frankly, some of you, you, know, I may, it may, uh, may, you may not recognize me if you saw me on top of Affiliate Challenge. So you know, let's get a little bit more real here, because this is not how any affiliate marketer I've ever known would ever dress, frankly. Um, you know, it's nice to look professional and everything, but uh, it's not real. So, this is my, my official you know, corporate dress type. You know, this, this is pretty much it right here. Jeans and a, and a t shirt, of course, my, uh, my Team Pepper Jam shirt. This is much more my day to day existence. This is actually more of like formal dress. Um, so you've been told this obviously before, or asked this before, but how many people here have an actual product of some kind? I guess it could be a service too. Product or service, in anything that you want to sell, of course. OK, good. Um, you know, like I said, definitely pay attention to this then, because we're going to talk about you know, getting uh, uh, affiliates as well, where to, where to put your product so that other affiliates can find it. Um, how many people here actually consider affiliate marketing 
not, not necessarily product creation, but affiliate marketing as a primary focus or interest area or something that, that you are really into or want to do or are doing? Is there anybody here who's primarily focused on that? Oh, actually, okay. A few more than I expected. I, I was kind of thinking this wasn't going to be a very affiliate marketing oriented group, but that's cool. Um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover a bunch. Of, I've got notes over here, so I'm just, you know, my cheat sheet here and make sure I, I hit the main points. Um, you know, before I get too deep into this, um, when I get to the end of this, I, I obviously I'm here, Ken invited me here, and he wanted me to, to have something to offer everybody, so I put something together that um, I've never even remotely considered, I've been asked to do before, but I've always said, no, 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 that's, that's, I don't want to do that. He can convince me, so, uh, you know, if anything I'm talking about here really resonates with you, and really is like, yeah, that's the kind of stuff that, that interests me, that's my, that appeals to me, whatever, um, just know that I've got, there's 10 people I can do it with. And that's physically all I can do because I'm, I'm me and I got my businesses to run and everything like that. So if what I'm talking about resonates, I got 10 people I can do it with. Just keep that in mind. I, I'd hate for anybody that it really clicks with to, to miss on something they want to do. Um, yeah, let, let's just get rolling. So I'm, I'm basically, this is the, the, the highlights of what I'm going to cover in now less than an hour. Uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to define affiliate marketing, the way I define it anyway. Um, I'm going to give you 12 great sources of products. So if you don't have a product, Go get one. It's not hard. In fact, it's incredibly ridiculously easy. Uh, and offers that you can do, you know, different kinds of offers you can promote. I'm going to give you my three core elements of any affiliate com campaign, what I believe are the three cores you can't get away from. I'm going to give you four steps to decide what should you promote, because just because there's something you can promote doesn't necessarily mean you should. Will it be worthwhile? Five must-have tools for keyword and market research. I'm going to talk about looking inside the numbers, which to me is a, a real, real passion point. I get real worked up over. You know, numbers are great, but what are they telling you? There's a story behind those numbers, and you need to understand that. And uh, I'm going to give you the ultimate swipe file. Some of you may already have this one bookmarked, but it's <laughs> you, you want copywriting? There you go. You got. It. You will have. You know, it's, imagine if you had access to everything Joe Sugarman ever wrote, every piece of copy he like ever wrote. Would that be useful to anybody? Yeah. Well, I don't have that, but you know, <laughs> I have probably the second best thing to that. So uh, it's very cool. And again, some of you. None of this is secret stuff, folks. It's all out there on Google. You can all find it, but you know, hey, I'll give you the shortcut right to it. Uh, and then I'm going to give you four killer resources for landing pages and split testing. And I'm going to talk a bit about that. That's it. Analysis and split testing and, and, and all that stuff is another real obsessive point with me. I could talk about it forever. One of the speakers yesterday, I think, said something like, you know, nobody likes the technical stuff, right? You know, no, nobody likes the technical stuff. I'm like, I do. I do. Because I love it. I, I, you know, whatever. It's in my blood. I, I'm really passionate about the technical stuff. All right. Um, oops, hello. Well, if anybody was paying attention, you can cheat. But uh, what, what is affiliate marketing? Can you, who, who can define briefly affiliate marketing for me? Anybody? You're promoting someone else's stuff for a piece of the pie, and they deliver it. OK. That's absolutely a definition. Anyone else have a, have a different definition? Word of mouth advertising. Word of mouth advertising, well, exactly. <laughs> and actually, that's my definition. I just, it's word of mouth. It's word of mouth or referral marketing. Right? And you know, the crazy thing is we've all done this our whole lives. Whether we know it or not, we all do it. Uh, it's, it's nothing new. It's promoting someone else's product or service you know, that you don't own, you didn't create, and you're getting paid based on your results. It's, it's result-oriented marketing. You get paid only if you actually achieve something. A lead is generated, a, a sale is made, uh, whatever it is. A phone call is delivered, whatever the, the action that's required is. You get paid, so it's it's really it's that you know cliche, but it's that sort of that win-win. They don't pay unless you deliver, and how much you make is only delivered is only determined by how much you work or how smart you work and how much you can automate and all these other kinds of things. Um, but it's results-oriented, which is really cool. So, um, does anybody here have a TiVo? Okay, we have a handful of TiVo owners here. Cool. Uh, out of you folks who own a TiVo, do any of you? Love your TiVo. Oh, yeah. uh, I figured it would be probably all of them. OK, that, that doesn't surprise me. me. Same here. Well, we're a three TiVo household. Let me tell you, we watch very little TV. But can anybody define, you know, five words or less? What, what is TiVo? What is a TiVo? Video Go for it. Yeah, you can watch your video when you want and fast forward to commercials. OK, watch your video when you want and fast forward commercials. Anybody else have another quick definition of what a TiVo actually is? Like if somebody said, what the heck is a TiVo? How would you give them the just snapshot view? Your favorite shows on demand. Favorite shows on demand. Cool. All right. 
Well, those are, those are examples of what TiVo does. Okay, but I would go so far, my definition of what a TiVo is, is TiVo is a search engine for television. That's what it is. You can put keywords into your TiVo and have it go out and no matter what time of the day or night, no matter what channel, no matter anything about it, it's going to get it. You're interested in a particular actor, director, whatever. You just, it just shows up. It just comes. It's a search engine for television. Now, the funny thing is that I, I have told a lot of people, needless to say, about TiVo, about how off, awesome it is and, you know, a search engine, oh, my God, it's just an amazing device and there's always something great to watch, biographies and, you know, documentaries and all kinds of cool stuff. And, and a number of those people have gone out and bought a TiVo based on my, you know, just, oh, you got it, it's incredible, or, or demonstrating it. I'll just give a live demo and, like, boom, they go run out and get one next thing I know. The weird thing is TiVo hasn't sent me a check. I'm still waiting. I, you know, one of these days, maybe it'll show up. But that's affiliate marketing, if I were getting paid, anyway. Um, that's all it is. We all do it. We talk about our favorite products and services, things that we love, and, and you know, we evangelize them. So the cool thing now is that we can get paid. Don't have to punch a clock. We don't have an answer to a boss. You know, at least you know, I don't. Um, and uh, you can promote what you want. If it's not working, you don't promote it. If it is working, you do promote it, it you know, whatever. At the same time, you don't promote something just because you love it. And I'll talk about, you know, I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit, actually. Um, let's see here. I'm actually cruising through my notes already. Um, let's see. The greatest thing to me about affiliate marketing is that basically you can, oh, hello, my badge broke. Nifty. Uh, you can set up an affiliate campaign. You can decide on something you want to promote and, and get it out there, get it rolling, and get it it is autopilot. I mean, it's sort of the, the holy grail of this, this passive income that I think probably all of us have aspired to. I know that was definitely what got me into it at first, was the idea that this website just sits there and makes me money, and I don't have to keep working for it over and over. I do the work once, and it just keeps coming in. And I'll tell you, once you achieve that, it's just an awesome thing. And then you want to just go do it again and again and again. That's sort of the ultimate goal, isn't it? I mean, residual income, is that not kind of what we all probably are trying to build more of? Would you agree residual income is important? Anyone? So enthusiastic. Um, yeah, residual income is a big deal, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, just imagine your own life. If you had an extra $200, which is, let's say, just you know, nothing, nothing stratospheric, not $40,000 in two weeks, no, you know, 200 bucks a month. What kind of a difference? What kind of, let's use the word. What kind of impact would that have on your life? Well, that's you know, a car payment or a, you know, or a couple of car payments. You know, I'm, I'm cheap. I, I'm not a car guy. Um, you know, that's, that's several bills. That's credit card payments. That could be you know, a big chunk of a mortgage in a lot of parts of the country, not Silicon Valley, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, it, that's a big deal. So that's the cool thing is you set it up once, and it just, just keeps working for you, keeps working for you. There's no limit to how many things you can promote. There's no limit to how much you can make. I mean, it's just all about how, how many times can you repeat this process. And of course, now we've got things like outsourcing, and I learned PHP so that I can automate a lot of things because I'm a control freak, and outsourcing kind of freaks me out uh, to human beings. But programs, they only do what I told them to do. They never question me. Uh, but I'm, I'm getting over that. I just got my first Indian outsourcer, and I'm testing the waters. Um, so you know. Once you figure it out once, you just do it over and over and over and over and over. And it becomes, it's, it's like what Brad was talking about, systems. You, you create a system for yourself on how to do this affiliate thing, whatever it is. And there's you know, a lot of ways to do it, which we'll talk about. And then you just do it again and again and again. There's just no limit. Um, are there any financial problems in the world right now? Any at all that anyone can think of? Yeah, I'd say there's a couple. There's definitely no shortage of financial problems in the world right now. But, uh, you know, well, I actually, <laughs> okay, I'll share a story with you. Um, about uh, four weeks ago now, um, my partner, Shannon, she, she's my back end office. Not my back end, but she's my back end office. Uh, hi, sweetheart, wherever you are. I don't know where the Ustream camera is, but I think she's watching. Um, and uh, she handles most of the financial end of things and tracks all the, you know, all the different, because obviously we, we leverage credit cards for ad spend and things like that. She tracks all that stuff just to the minutia. And she, about four weeks ago, she went and logged into to our accounts or whatever to, to do something and uh, says, um, hey, there's something, something weird on the screen that says, like, it's a different bank now. I go, what? What are you talking about? And I go and I log into wamu.com. And yeah, there's a box there that says, hey, wamu is now Chase. And I'm thinking, oh, crap. What does that mean? 
all, we have like 20 something bank accounts between the two of us there. It's like they're all of our accounts are there, all of our wires go there, all of the, I mean, it's all there. Needless to say, I was momentarily a bit freaked out. And I'm thinking, well, how did this even happen? I mean, I didn't even know this was going on. I had no idea any of this stuff was happening. This, this banking, there was a run, there was literally a run on WAMU. I did not know. Because I was just doing my thing. And the money was coming in, and I'm just, you know, whatever. So, and it still hasn't affected anything for us. So affiliate marketing can be a really nice insulator against a lot of things. Although if you sit down and talk with me at length, you'll see I'm very clear about it. I would never want it to be your sole thing. Although affiliate marketing can produce by itself multiple streams of income, it itself is one thing. And it can be volatile. But it's one great piece of a puzzle. So you add other things, product creation, and, and you know, other things like that to it. It's, it's, it's an awesome combo. So anyway, um, I really think affiliate marketing is the ideal business for anybody who's driven, who's self-sufficient, who's self-motivated, and, and, you know, or, or can get themselves that way, and, uh, and who likes systems and, and wants to replicate things and so forth. Uh, because it just, it will always be there. There's no shortage of things you can promote. There will never be a time when you can't find a product or, you know, gosh, this affiliate marketing thing doesn't work anymore because there's just nothing out there to, to sell. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Okay. Oh, you do have to be able to, to understand risk and reward, though, obviously. There's risk in everything. There's no business venture anywhere that I've ever, ever seen that you know, is guaranteed no risk, blah, blah, blah. I've seen a lot of things that claim that. You know, there's no risk. There's always risk. It may not be financial risk, but trust me, the risk is there. You know, no money down real estate. But I'll tell you, we did a lot of that. Oh, there's, you have no risk. No money. Total BS. There's loads of risk. It's just not monetary risk if you don't use your money, but the risk is there. Anyway, that's a, a whole other rant. I won't get on that soapbox. Um, well, one thing that, that kind of just personal, personal frustration um, for me, whoops, what did I do? I'm, I'm bumping buttons here, uh, is that when people, when times are tough, I gotta really speed up. When times are tough, people start talking about, oh, cut back, cut back expenses, and, and get rid of the car, and we'll, we'll ride bikes, and we'll walk everywhere, or, or you know, whatever. We're gonna cut back on, on the, the high speed internet, go to dial up, and you know, all these kinds of things. I think that's insane. I think that's absolutely, you're out of your freaking gourd to do that. Because what do you inevitably, when I hear people talk about what they're cutting back, inevitably, what are they cutting back on? Efficiency items. Get rid of your car and spend time walking and bicycling and whatever? No. If I need to do something in the car, it needs to just get over with, because that's a non-revenue producing activity, and I want to get it done with as quickly as possible. Um, obviously, cutting back on unnecessary things or on the extra trips to the mall and stuff, yeah, duh. Of course, you know, spend wisely. But don't get rid of efficiency items. Make a lot more money instead. That was the choice I made. I, I mean, literally, this isn't in my presentation at all, but I'll just go ahead and share it. Uh, last summer, we were staring at the complete collapse of our little mini Trump real estate empire we were building up. And the whole rug was pulled out from under it. I mean, like overnight. We found out that most of our appraisals on the properties were fraudulent. They were never worth what we thought or what we were told. Uh, plus, you know, the market values did just, even, even on the good properties, the values just tanked overnight. It was unreal how fast it happened. And we were looking at, well, the only property we have that's got any real honest to goodness value is our home in Silicon Valley because values didn't change. They, did, they just stayed. They, they have not really budged much at all. And I don't think they will because it's a supply and demand thing. But anyway. We were staring at the situation of we, can, we need a bunch of money fast or we're on the streets, basically. We had pulled a huge amount of the money out of the house, whatever equity we had, in order to leverage it into other real estate. Common thing. Everybody, I mean, all the real estate seminars tell you to do this. They teach you exactly how to do it. It's a really common thing. And it's a, it's a good strategy applied correctly. We didn't know a lot of things that we know now. Anyway, you know, it, it came down to either cut way back, let's go move into a little crappy apartment somewhere, let's, let's totally downsize our life, let's uh, you know, sell the house, get what we can for it, just get out, and, and so on and so forth, or make a ton of money fast. And you know, we're, we're two different personalities. You know, my, my, my partner was looking in the paper you know, for rent places and you know, starting to do certain that, and I said, to hell with that, we're not leaving. We are not leaving. I don't care what happens, we are going nowhere. We are staying right here. I like it here. I like this street. I like this house. We're not moving. So lo and behold, I busted my butt for a couple of months and came up with LP Gen, which did you know, a $50,000 day. That was a good day. 
It's a very, very good day. Now, I mean, that wasn't affiliate. That was you know, my own product. But that's why I say you, you know, have a little of everything. Um, all right, tangent. I'm a, tan I'm a dangerous tangent guy. <sighs> let's see here. Um, well, I mean, let's, just, let's just get some real, real specific examples. And, uh, and would, would you all like to see a, a live demonstration of affiliate marketing? Yeah. All right, let's do a live demonstration of affiliate marketing. Um, what are some of the possible things that you could promote as an affiliate? Anyone? Traffic Geyser. Traffic Geyser. There you go. Absolutely. Frank Souza. Frank. Another tangent. Frank Souza's product, Secret Money Generator, was the second tool I ever bought online. The sad thing is I didn't get it at the time. I really didn't understand exactly what was going on with it. Now I completely do. I look back on that and go, God, if I had just known what I knew to do and had understood that tool, oh, the amount of money I missed out on. But anyway, so yeah, Frank's an interesting part of my personal history. What, what other things could you promote? Just JV Alert. JV Alert. All right, not necessarily specific, but like types of categories, like broad. Automation Information products. products, automobiles. Vacations. Vacations, golf. Yeah, I mean, the, the, where I'm going. Plasma TVs. There you go. I, I hear there's a website you can available so that like does that. Um, <laughs> highest bidder. But anyway, yeah. The point is, there's, there's, I mean, there's no limit. The categories are just wide open. There is pretty much nothing that couldn't be affiliate marketed. If you find something that's not being affiliate marketed, I bet you could find a company that sells it that you could explain affiliate marketing to them, and then they would want to be into affiliate marketing. I mean, there's just no, there's no end to it. Uh, that, that, you know, that's really good stuff. Here is a short list of what I came up with when I thought of, of the same question. By the way, I said we were going to do a live example of affiliate marketing. Well, here it comes. I'm an affiliate marketer. I would not be doing my job if I did not provide affiliate links. Okay? But I understand. We're marketers. We get jaded. We don't trust something just because of the affiliate link. So I'm giving you the, the naked link, too. Not a problem. If you don't want to use the affiliate link, cool, whatever. It doesn't, doesn't matter to me. What's most important to me is that you get the resource and know about it. You can check it out. But I am providing affiliate links. Doing my job. So here are some of what I came up with. This is by no means a complete and comprehensive, you know, be all end all list. But we got CJ, Commission Junction is the full name. CJ.com, lots of retail, e-commerce, big box stores, things like that. Tends to be bigger companies who have their program with CJ. eBay used to be with CJ. Now they've moved to eBay Partner Network. Um, ClickBank. Is there anybody here who doesn't know what ClickBank is? Oh my gosh, we actually, I was, I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> well, ClickBank, that's actually good because I can explain it. It gives me a reason to, to say what it is. ClickBank is a, uh, a marketplace for digital products. It is probably the biggest marketplace for strictly digital downloadable products. Uh, how many people here have a product listed in ClickBank? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least eight, nine, ten. I see a few more coming up. Eleven. Yeah, there's, there's, you know, ClickBank is widely used. Now, how many people have ever promoted something out of ClickBank? Yeah, a lot more hands. That's what I figured. Um, so ClickBank, uh, share a sale, similar to Commission Junction, retail types of offers. These are what they usually call cost per sale offers because somebody has to actually whip out the credit card and buy something in order for you to get a commission. Link share, same kind of thing, more retail type offers. Uh, I think link share is kind of a narrower uh, number of possibilities. Commission Junction is definitely the 800 pound gorilla. They're the biggie. Uh, lead pile, lead pile is kind of an oddball. Has anybody here ever heard of lead pile? Not surprised. I hadn't either until a few months ago. Uh, lead Pile is a, a, a lead generation marketplace, kind of like a stock exchange, but for lead generators. It's a little strange of a concept, but it's interesting. You generate leads, they go into their system, and then they have lead buyers who are willing to pay X amount for each lead, depending on the quality of the lead, on what fields were filled out, and, and whether the information is valid, and so on and so forth. So you never know quite what you're going to get. You might get a $12, $15 for that lead. You might get a buck fifty. I had a lead that sold for zero because it was just that bad of a quality lead. It's, it's, it's odd, but it's an interesting marketplace. Most all format, all focused around lead generation, primarily financial, uh, cash advance, loans, payday, uh, auto loans, auto insurance, things of that nature. Um, but anyway, lead pile. It's an interesting, interesting idea. eBay, of course. Anybody here has never heard of eBay? Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, Hydra, Hydra Media. Uh, Hydra is a what's known as a CPA network. Um, it is not, in fact, neither of these are. Neither of these are networks that I use on top of Affiliate Challenge, but they are networks that I use in my own business that I do you know, a fair amount with. I like Hydra. They've got a good interface, lots and lots and lots of different categories of offers, um, both lead gen and cost per sale. Uh, you can get paid on someone submitting an email address, for example, things like that. Uh, in in Senta Click, that's the, the, another one that I use quite a bit. Same, same type of thing, same basic idea. It's a CPA network, lots of different offers and so forth, same model. 
<sighs> Does anybody here market outside of the US? OK. All right, OK, actually, more hands. Go. All right, so if you're not marketing it to foreign to, well, it's not foreign to them, to non-United States <laughs> customers, you really should. You really should look at international traffic. And I'm, I'm as guilty as anyone of not doing enough of this. I have dabbled in it. I've done a little bit. I've seen that it's there, and it works, and it converts well and everything. But I just focus. It's so hard. You know, this is them doing 18 things. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, hi, my name is Jonathan, and I'm a multitasker. Uh, it's bad, uh, and I'm, I'm correcting it. I'm getting better. Um, anyway, international traffic tends to convert a lot better. They don't have as much banner blindness, ad blindness. You know, they, they're, they're just. They're not used to being barraged and bombarded with advertising the way we in the US are. We're just, we just ignore it. Like, yeah, whatever. It's an ad. We've seen it. You know? They click. They go through. They buy things. They fill them out. You know, to them, it's, it's, they, it converts a lot better. That's all I'm trying to say. It converts well. Check it out. Question is, where would you go to promote foreign offers? If you wanted to promote German affiliate programs, where would you go? <coughs> Probably have no idea. Yeah, I wouldn't really expect very many people to have any ideas. So, here are some places you can go. Trade Doubler. TradeDoubler.com is sort of, from my research and, and from talking to other affiliates and, and that are much heavier into, into the Western European, especially European markets, Trade Doubler is pretty much the 800 pound gorilla. They're, they're a big affiliate network in mostly European territories. Affiliate Window and Affiliate Future also both focus primarily, it seems, on, on the European markets. Um, Lucky Pacific, however, is focused on the Pacific. They're focused on the Asian markets, China uh, and, uh, and India, and those kinds of things. So they focus primarily on those areas. So good stuff to know if you want to explore non-United States-based affiliate marketing. Now, there are issues with non-US affiliate marketing, of course. Um, some of the websites, I mean, the reason I only have four here is because the vast majority of the ones, excuse me, the vast majority of the ones that I know about or that I found during my research were not in English. So. <laughs> Yeah, signing up is a little tricky. Um, so, but, it, but if you speak another, you know, the, the language that it's in, you've got a huge advantage, a gigantic strategic advantage, because you can not only use the network, because you actually can sign up, which is a good start. Uh, you, can, you, can you can understand the offers. You can create landing pages. If you're marketing, I was talking to, there's a fellow from Germany here. I I'm so bad. There he is, yeah, right there. Uh, and we've been talking a lot about this because he's, he's of German you know, origin, and obviously speaks great English, but he's of German origin, so he speaks German. And he's been trying to market ClickBank products to, through the German market, through German PPC. And you know, it's been, been struggling, and, and it hasn't been working all that well, really. And I, I, my, my advice to him was, OK, here's the issue. I, I guarantee this is it. It's all, all a mental thing. It's all a head game thing. You take a German customer. Take a German customer and send them to an uh, English language selling page that's trying to sell them. It's a ClickBank page. Sell, sell, buy my product. It's great. It's awesome. It's got all these things in it, whatever. There's going to be a huge disconnect. Not that they can't read it. They, they read English just fine. That's not the issue. The issue is you're not speaking to them the way their brain works. You're not talking to them in their thought patterns and their thought processes and their sales process. It's, it's all wrong. So my suggestion was to a bridge page. Send them to an intermediate page in German that has some content on it, but that pre-sells them on the product in their psychology, in the way they think, in the way they talk, and, you know, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then they'll get to the, to the ClickBank page. And it's, yes, yeah, in English, that's fine. They don't have a problem with English products. But the important thing is now they have been pre-sold. And they're prepared for what they're going to see on the ClickBank page. Man, I am off on so many tangents here. Uh, but hopefully this is, this is good. Hopefully this is useful stuff. Um, let me just move along here. Uh, my three basic components of any affiliate campaign. All right, these are the three pieces of the puzzle that I believe are always there no matter what. You have to get data. You have to analyze data. And most important of all, you have to act on the data. You know, we've been talking so much about action, action, action. Well, here's just another example of that. You've got to act on that data. And this, this, these three steps appear on any time scale, any, any scale of the process from I need to get data. OK, I need to choose an offer or a market. I need to analyze data. Well, I need to look at the market, gauge it. Is there competition? Is there demand? Is there you know, all these kinds of things? Then I need to act on it. OK, I need to figure out like promotion. Like, how am I going to actually promote this thing? So you know, and then on the, on the much broader scale, you've got to get data. Well, how's my business revenue? You need to look, you know, analyze it. Well, actually, well, you know, get the data would be the business revenue. Analyze it would be, well, how is my business revenue? And how does it compare to last month, and so on and so forth? And then act on it is, what do I need to do to change it to increase that revenue? Big scale, small scale, doesn't matter. These three steps still apply. <sighs> I 
OK. Um, so let's say uh, you, can, you can promote any, I mean, seriously, anything affiliate. You can promote ringtones for your cell phone. You can promote plasma screen TVs. You, uh, who here knew that you could promote steak? <laughs> Thor better be raising his hand. I know he knows. Don should know. A few. Yeah, you can promote steak, I kid you not, and have people or who order steak to their door. I mean, you can promote anything. There, there's they're no. Really good. At, yeah, and apparently they're really good. I wouldn't know, but apparently they're really good. Uh, so, I mean, seriously, you can, you can promote anything. But let, let's just say that you've, you've chosen something, all right? You've picked your product, you know what you want to promote. Would you all say the next step is to start promoting it? Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah, if you agreed, unfortunately, you're wrong. See, you don't promote anything until you have data that tells you it's worth promoting. Because I'll tell you, you could spend a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy chasing things that were obviously from the get-go just really not worth the effort. So you need to look at things and decide, you know, do I want to promote this or not? Uh, oh, a quick, quick side note. Does anybody here do PPC or has done PPC or wants to do PPC or, you know, any ball? OK, great. Uh, Here's something that just occurred to me last night. Um, there's basically your PPC ad needs to achieve, or I mean your, your process rather, I should say, sorry, your PPC process needs to cover basically three things. And this is just a paraphrase, it just flashed into my head. It's a paraphrase of the, the old how to give a presentation format. Tell them what you're gonna sell them, or tell them what you're gonna sell them, sell them, and then tell them what you sold them. Your PPC ad tells them what you were going to sell them. Your landing page, your sales page needs to sell them. And then you confirm, of course, in your email, whatever, and say, oh, great, you bought this, and here's what you're going to get, and you know, it's so wonderful, and, and I love you, and so forth. So anyway, just to, for PPC people, the PPC ad needs to tell them what they are going to expect when they get there. This is what I, for some of you saw me on the panel, I would like jump up, PPC ad's job is not to get clicks, you know, and I kind of make a big deal out of that. Um, I, I feel really strongly about that. And I've made that mistake of getting engaging curiosity and get people to click and get them to wonder, what's behind this? It's a huge mistake. You will burn cash like you cannot believe. Don't do it. Put your price in the ad. Scare them away. Your job is to say, you do not want to come through here unless you got your wallet open and you want it and you're ready. That's the people you want clicking. So anyway, obviously another soapbox. OK, I need to move on. Um, let's see here. Uh, how do we know what to promote? Right? Well, we need to do some market research. Here are some things that I suggest you do. Of course, again, I, this list could be 10 pages long. The, uh, Paul and, and Frank covered a few market research things and keyword research and things like that. I'm going to cover a few more. Um, look at broad keyword search volumes. You know, uh, the, not, not Panasonic 1080p plasma screen TV at Best Buy. You know, not these long tail ones, just broad, just in general. Does the market have any kind of demand? Plasma TV. Are there searches for it? You know, whatever, broad, broad terms. Just to get a rough gauge of how is this market even active? Economic data, does this market spend money? Are you gonna promote something that people spend money on? If, you know, if you're promoting a physical good, if you're promoting a lead gen, it's gonna be a different thought process. But for, for physical products of some kind, you wanna know, do people spend money on it? Do people spend money on plasma screen TVs? No, you all get them for free? <laughs> I need to talk to you guys, seriously. I, I want one. Economic data, do they spend money? Yes, okay, I'll answer it for you. People spend money on plasma screen TVs, and a lot of it. Market hunger, okay, do they, want, do they have to have the product? Are they just, gotta have it, gotta have it, gotta have it. Are they just, you know, frothing at the mouth over the product? I would go so far if we're gonna talk plasma screen TVs again to say that, yeah, I'd say, you know, probably more men than women, but yeah, I'd say that a lot of guys are pretty much chomping at the bit to get a plasma screen TV. It's got some sex appeal, you know, people, people want it. If they want it, if they're in the market for it, they gotta have one. And they know exactly which one they gotta have. So, the first thing you see when you walk into Costco. Bingo, TVs everywhere. You walk in the door to Costco and that's what you're hit with. You walk in the door to, to you know, any kind of, any place that carries electronic goods, the big screen, sexy TVs are right there in front. That tells you something. So, make sure that it's a hungry market. You don't want to try to promote something in a market that's kind of, eh, not that, not that excited about it. Um, how do we know what to promote? Also, do competitive research. How many results are there for your primary keywords in the search engine? Again, we're not talking long tail. We're talking just your main broad keywords, plasma screen TV, LCD TV, Panasonic plasma, the broader stuff. 
just how many results are there? If you, there's a big difference between a keyword that has six results and a keyword that has 480 million. Granted, the six result keyword, you will kill it. You'll put up a website, ping it to the search engines, bam, you're number one like tomorrow. Seriously, it still works, it's still totally doable. The question is how much search volume does that really get? And that's, unfortunately, Paul talked a lot about that yesterday. You can find good balances between those two that have relatively less competition and are easily, easy to dominate, but still get a good amount of search volume. And that's, that's the kind of thing ultimately you're looking for. How many paid ads are there? Is there a ton of PPC? If there's a zillion PPC advertisers, obviously they're spending money, there's a reason. You know, they're not spending money just because they like to spend money, they're spending money because they're making money. So that tells you something. Uh, when there's no PPC ads whatsoever, I wonder and I want to look a lot more closely. Uh, how many different affiliate websites are promoting the same thing? Okay, if you look at the top 10 search results in Google for a particular keyword and every single one of them is clearly an affiliate promoting whatever it is, okay, there's some affiliates in this market. They're promoting, they've built websites, they've spent some time and energy and invested in this. There's probably some money to be had. That's, that's something that's worth looking further at. Are there any good synonyms? Keyword research time. This is an interesting thing that I don't hear people talk about very much, but, but I like it. Uh, are there good synonyms for the same basic word? Like uh, uh, vacation, okay? If you were doing vacation promotion, the keyword vacation is obvious one in you know, Cancun vacation and European vacation and whatever. But other people refer to it as holiday. Well, if you're competing in the US, I think US people mostly think vacation. But what if you could get traffic from people who are searching for a holiday instead? There might, you might find, I don't know that this is the case, I haven't researched this market, it's just a, a synonym that occurred to me. I would look at holiday also, I'd also look at travel. They might refer to it as just European travel. You know? and, and you might find that one of those different synonyms that basically means the same thing gets a lot of traffic, but nobody's fighting over it. So consider that. Good secondary and mid-tail terms, not the super long-term eight-word keywords, not the two or three-word shorties, but like the four to six keywords, kind of like what they looked at last night with the plasma screen TV. That's, a, that's an example of a good mid-tail keyword. Still gets good search volume, but isn't totally over-competitive. All right. Um, network research. This is another one that I don't hear people talk about very often. It's not just enough to simply research your product and your market, but research the networks you're thinking of promoting. How many people have ever used either of these two websites? Anyone? Okay, like five or six people, okay. Well, what these are is they're free websites. You can go sign up at both of them, they're free, um, and they allow you to type in a keyword, and they bring up a ton of different networks that have offers for that keyword, and you can now compare the two. Now, they don't have every possible network and every possible offer, of course, but they have a, a subset of networks and offers, and you can find out who's got, for example, better payouts. If you know that network A promotes the same offer for $14, you'll get paid. Network B has the same offer for $16. What are you going to do? Go with 16. Go with 16. Yeah, of course. Take the higher pay. Take the higher pay. Bingo, Frank knows where I'm going with this. That's the other thing you can do is you can go to your, if you have an existing relationship with account, man, account rep A, go to them and say, hey, look, man, or woman, I've got some female account reps, they're awesome. Um, in fact, they're often a lot more helpful. <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, but anyway, look, this network's got it for 16. What can you do for me? I have never had a network tell me they couldn't at least match it. And occasionally I've had them say, we'll beat it. Yes, they really are flexible. These guys have margin built in. They have padding. There is not a single network that ever puts their, what they call the street price, as what they really have, like the, all they can give. No way. They give it as low as they can get away with and see how many people will promote it for that. And then, you know, if you ask for more, well, okay, we'll give you a bump. The best way to get them to want to give you bumps, by the way, is to send them some volume. Money talks flat out. It's amazing how much more attention you get from networks when you actually start sending some volume to them. So anyway. Um, make sure you have a good relationship with your account managers. That's huge. I didn't do that for a long time. I didn't really get to know them and spend time talking to them. That is, is massive. And of course, ClickBank doesn't have account managers. CJ, well, they kind of sort of do, but not really. Uh, but you know, if it's a CPA network or whatever, they all, you always have a personal account, excuse me, account manager. Talk to them. Get to know them, befriend them, and, and get them to help you. It's, it's huge. All right. Um, so we've chosen an offer, nice healthy market. Uh, we got to actually start building a campaign, okay? We got to build an affiliate campaign. What does that mean? What is, who can define for me what an affiliate campaign is? It's all the stuff you use to promote their stuff. Not bad. That's a pretty all-encompassing definition. I like that. It's all the stuff you use to promote their stuff. I like, I like that. That actually really kind of wraps it up neatly. 
uh, you know, it's, it's hard to define an affiliate campaign because it could be so many different things. I mean, one person puts up a blog, another person puts up a, a social media site, another person does PPC, another person does banners, another person does contextual, another person does text links, another person does media buys. Another, you see what I'm getting at? There is, there's a million and one different ways to promote. By the way, just a, a quick side note, PPC does not mean AdWords, folks. PPC does not mean AdWords. There are so many other places to do PPC. And of course, the biggies are MSN and Yahoo, MSN Ad Center and Yahoo. That was touched on yesterday by Paul. Um, MSN and Yahoo, just, just they're your friends, trust me. They are so much less hassle than Google. They got plenty of people say, oh, but there's no traffic. Oh, yeah, right. There's loads of traffic. And I know people that are making money that you probably would not believe. And, and I know they're making it. And it's insane. And it's, none of it's Google. So <laughs> Google's big, but they ain't the internet. So yeah, that's another, another soapbox I won't get on. Um, let's see, uh, I'm trying to my nose here. Um, let me just jump, I'll just, just jump in right into the resources. Let me just give you, give you all some more resources, uh, more URLs and, and, and tools and things you can use. Here's some keyword research tools, all right? Paul, and several people have talked about the Google keyword tool. It's great. It's free. It's, it's awesome. I highly, strongly suggest using it. Uh, you just go to Google and type in Google Keyword Tool. Bam, first result. You, you can't miss it. I love using Google to find things on Google. It just somehow feels right. Um, Keyword Spy. Interesting competitive analysis website similar to SpyFu that, that Paul mentioned yesterday. Um, they go monitor lots and lots of, they monitor all the PPC ads and all the PPC campaigns of like everybody under the sun and you can, if you're promoting shoes, you could go see what keywords Nike is bidding on and say, give me Nike's keyword list. And they'll give you, you know, oh, 130,000 keywords, here you go. Now, of course, you gotta know what to do with them. Keyword lists, uh, it drives me crazy when people say, this is a money-making keyword list. No, it's not. It's a keyword list. The money-making part is a different process, but anyway. It's a great place to start. If you know your competitor is using these keywords, well then, hey, maybe you should look into that too. Um, this is a cool one. And this is actually, Paul uh, gave one last night that was from, um, I forgot, I have my, in my notes, for, uh, Frank, what was the, the, the shopping website? The, um, Skymall. Skymall, thank you, Skymall. That was cool. Oh, I loved that. This is actually, I think this is even a, a, a one, they, they one-upped Skymall, shopping.com slash top underscore searches, or just go to shopping.com down at the bottom, you'll see a link to top searches. They actually give you not only the, 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 the categories that are searched for the most, you click on each category, and they give you the keywords that people are typing in on shopping.com to buy a, the product. How amazing is that? I mean, it's just awesome. So must, must, must use, that is huge. Oh, uh, here's one actually that I, it's not up there. This is a fun one. KW Browse. KW Browse. K W B R O W S E dot com. K Keyword Browse. It's a great way to go lateral with your keywords, but not too lateral, which you know is you know, you go a little bit broad, but you don't want to wind up way off in, in left or right field. It, it uh, it's a great way to expand your keyword lists out laterally a, a little bit. It's uh, I love it. I use it all the time. Um, Let's see, uh, market research. Uh, Google Insights, anybody ever here, here ever used Google Insights? Two, three, a few people. Yeah, Google Insights is cool. Uh, again, you put in, a, you put in your, your keyword and it gives you the top searches, uh, um, or sorry, uh, the, the top, top searches that are related to the term you put in, but it also gives you the searches related to the term you typed in that are the most on the rise. So it will spot keywords that have a 2,000% surge over the last 30 days in searches. Wow, well that tells you something. There's a sudden spike in interest in that keyword. Maybe I should investigate that and look a little deeper. So Google Insights is cool. Uh, TerraPeak, this is a fun one. I've used this one for a year, a year and a half now. It's not free, it's like 15 bucks a month I think is the level I have. It's, a, it's actually an eBay research tool. Has anybody ever used TerraPeak or heard of it? Wow, oh okay, one, one or two. Um, it's, you know, it's not appropriate for everyone, but if you're promoting physical products, there's a, you, you, eBay is a great research tool. Paul talked about it last night. TerraPeak basically just takes all that data, puts it in one nice place, and they do things like you can sort stuff by the top number of bids. I've used it to get ad copy for running like Craigslist ads. And I'll sort by number of bids and you know, figure, hey, if this ad headline got the most bids, 
then maybe I can adapt that ad copy or maybe just lift it direct, depending on how the person wrote it, and use it in my ad because obviously it got people to click on the auction. People want that. So it's a really cool tool, really useful for that. Um, MSN has a, just a ridiculous tool suite. There's all kinds of crazy cool research stuff in there, and I, could, I couldn't give you all the links, so I just gave you the main master link. It's adlab, adlab.msn.com, slash alltools.aspx. Sorry, that's an ugly URL, I know. Um, you could also just go to you know, Google and search for something like MSN Ad Center Tools or something, and I'm, I'm sure you'd find it. But uh, they have just a ton of really cool stuff, really good stuff. Um, Oh, uh, also, for demographic research. This is also huge for demographics. Quantcast. Have you ever heard of Quantcast? Yeah, I figured there'd be a few more. A lot of people know about that one. It's really good. They have this thing called a media planner where you can type in the, or you can check tick boxes next to who you want. Like, I want women between the ages of 21 and 35 that make at least $60,000 a year. Bing, bang, boom. Give me a list of, of websites that cater to those people. Very, very cool research tool. Uh, it's very neat. Oh, Quantcast, yeah, good point. Q-U-A-N-T, cast, C-A-S-T, Q-U-A-N-T, cast, dot com. Very, very useful tool. Use it all the time. All right, um, PPC tools, AdWords editor. I mean, if you're doing AdWords, you have to be using the AdWords editor, period, end of story. Use it, use it, use it, it's awesome. It's just a desktop tool, allows you to build your campaigns on the desktop and then just shoot them up to Google and run them instead of dealing with Google's web interface. It's just, it's killer. So AdWords editor, gotta use it. Speed PPC, now this is an advanced tool. This is absolutely positively not for newbies or even for people that are kind of beginners. Speed PPC will allow you to build massive PPC campaigns very, very fast. Thing is, if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know how to make a profitable PPC campaign yet, all it's going to do is allow you to make lots more bigger losing campaigns. <laughs> so awesome tool, great tool. I love it. I've gotten to know the creator really well. I have support for it. It's tokens and LP Gen. I've integrated things, and it's great. But it's an advanced tool. It's, a, it's like a $500 tool as well. Uh, it's, it's not a low-end tool. So not for, uh, for the newbies. Um, all right, so, so we've got data. We analyzed data. Uh, we acted on it. We created the campaign. We ran the campaign. Um, we've got some stats, right? We got traffic stats, we got uh, uh, spend stats, conversion stats, we got all these different kinds of stats. How do we make some sense of it all? All these numbers, all this data. Well, you know, some people just use the stuff that's in their host, in their cPanel, all stats and Webalizer or raw logs, whatever. You know, yeah, that tells you some stuff. But it's really hard to make sense of it. It's really hard to, to figure out, well, what, what does this really mean looking at all this, this stuff? So there are some, some better tools out there for, um, uh, for doing that kind of analysis. Um, hello, come on. I'm getting blinded by this sucker. Um, all right, so you got to look inside the numbers. Um, actually, well, okay. For PPC, let's say that you're getting uh, tons of traffic but no clicks. What does that tell you? Let's say you're getting tons of clicks but no sales. What does that tell you? You know, let's, what if you're getting no traffic? Just your campaign's sitting there and it's just, it's just nothing happening. There's no impressions, there's nothing. Well, what does that mean? You gotta be able to figure out what these things mean. These are all just numbers and data. They've gotta mean something to you. So, um, you know, you gotta be able to, to look at your stats and analyze them and look past just the data. Fortunately, we've got a bunch of tools now that are available to help us with this stuff that uh, a lot of them are free, actually. Some of the better ones are free. Tracking 202 and Prosper 202 are the same thing. The difference is Tracking 202 is hosted on their servers. Prosper 202 is on yours. Um, but it's a great way to track all of your stuff. Again, you, the Tracking 202 is the, the easy way to do it because it's hosted on them. You just sign up for an account and go. Uh, Prosper 202, if you want to host it on your own server, a little more secure, maintain the data on your side and protect it. Uh, but you got to be able to upload and install a PHP script. It has a little configuration and that kind of thing. So as long as that doesn't scare you off, then go for it. Stats Junkie. Um, Ken mentioned this yesterday, statsjunkie.com actually, uh, I think, oh no, actually my link, either one. You can go to my affiliate link there or you can go to statsjunkie.com slash free. I think that's what Ken gave out yesterday. And uh, I'm just starting to play with it. It looks very cool. Uh, it doesn't do everything that I want, of course, but I'm talking to the developer now and I'm saying he needs to have this, he needs to have that, and he's starting to add things. So this could potentially save me from having to develop an entire solution that I was starting to plan in my head of like, okay, I'm gonna have to just build my own. And I really don't want to, and this could solve that. So Stats Junkie's very, looking very cool. Clicktail, this is wild. I have not 
really done much with this yet, but the concept blows me away. I don't know exactly how the heck they're doing it, but it actually monitors and records your visitors' actions on your website. Have you, have you used it? I don't like it. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I want to talk to you about that, find out what that is. Um, and it, you literally, you can log into your thing and have movies of where people went on your website, where they clicked and where they paused and where they got stuck and where they got confused and didn't know what to do. And I mean, how valuable is that? You, got, you could just optimize your landing page fix, and fix these things because you know exactly what your visitors are actually doing on your page. That's just amazing to me. So I, I'm excited about that one. I really want to start playing with it a lot more. Once again, time. Time is always the killer. So many cool things to, to try. Uh, all right, copywriting. Copyblogger.com. It's a cool blog all about copywriting. They got some copywriting, free copywriting courses, and a lot of good stuff on copywriting. The ultimate swipe file I talked about is right there, the GaryHalbertLetter.com. Gary Halbert was a, a really super, 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 super brilliant, brilliant marketer. Wrote amazing copy. Uh, he passed away. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm not exactly sure when, some, some few years back, but uh, his entire history of his, le his newsletters is all online for anybody to just read and learn from and copy and steal and, you know, whatever. Uh, so the GaryHalbertLetter.com, awesome for, for copywriting. All right, you always have to be analyzing results, looking at things uh, and, and trying to make them better. Um, you know, some tools for doing that sort of thing are Google Website Optimizer. Paul touched on this one yesterday as well. You can just Google it. Again, Google Website Optimizer. It's what's known as a multivariate tool, which is a fancy way to say multi multiple variables. Um, very cool tool. Uh, dressed to convert. My graphics guy, actually, who is the guy who did the graphics for Day Job Killer and Google Payload and, and the Google Guru Slayer and like practically every single solitary product launch that's happened in the last however many years. Uh, this is actually his product because he has seen all these launches from the inside. And he designed all, of, all the landing pages and, and you know, he's figured out how that there's a process, there's a system, there's a method for making landing pages that actually convert. It's one thing to have them look pretty, it's another thing to have them make you money. So he's put together an info product. He finally realized, ding, the light bulb went off. I need to make my own knowledge available as an info product and, and have my own product and get it out there. So he's finally done that. I said, absolutely, man, I will help you out. I will definitely tell people about this. Uh, you know, you, you do awesome work. So his name is Ryan, designgururyan.com uh, is his main graphics website. You can also just go to the Dress to Convert website and uh, check that out. 43 split tests, uh, very interesting. Uh, I, I want to say it's, uh, I think it's Ryan, Ryan Dice's uh, thing. But uh, anyway, it's a ton of different split tests that, that were performed, and it's the results. Cut out all the, all the middleman and uh, go straight to the results of those tests. Of course, LP Gen, light and plug, my product, uh, for content optimized dynamic landing pages, um, which if you're doing AdWords especially, you're either getting killed for not having them now already, or you will be if you're, if you're not. Uh, it's, it's, it's a must have if you're doing AdWords. You just, you just gotta have it. And I haven't seen anything else that easily does what it does. Um, so plug, 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 LP Gen. Um, Oh, also, there's a freebie for you I added at the last minute. lpgen.com slash freegifts.html. It's just a, you know, it's the opt-in special report. Opt in and get my special report on the top 10 deadly landing page mistakes people make. These are the things that I've been asked by all my LPGen customers, hundreds of them. Can you look at my page and tell me what you think? They're always asking me that, and I see a lot of the same mistakes over and over and over. So you can go get that. There's also an interview with Gohar Chaudhry on there, too, that they're in the same zip file. So sorry about that if it's a little large for the download. There's kind of you know just uh, what LPGen looks like. So um, I've got hundreds of hundreds of users for LPGen. Um, they're still using it to crank along, increase their ROI, lower their PPC costs. Um, you know I've got just some some amazing testimonials that that blew my mind from guys. I've got I've got five and six figure a month affiliates using LPGen as the core. Like the, all their business runs through my tool, which is kind of cool. It's like kind of a neat feeling. But uh, this is you know just kind of what what LPGen can do. Um, it can create any kind of any kind of site you want. I mean, you know, anything under the sun. Yeah. What the heck did he just say? Well, basically, there it is. For for as helpful as that is, if anybody needs a quick recap, it's a good thing. These streams are being recorded, I assume, somewhere. You can go back and. All right. Awesome. Good. Because I am like still trying to whiz through this, and I'm like down to a few minutes. So anyway. Um, you know, I I I hope you can see. 
you know, the potential in affiliate marketing, I mean, you probably did even before you came here. And if you didn't before you came here, you probably have since hearing people talk and talking to people and networking and everything like that. I mean, affiliate marketing is a big deal. Don't overlook it. And like I said earlier, if you have a product, you need affiliates. Get your affiliates going. Get your product in ClickBank. Get your product in um, pay.com you know, if it's a digital product. Or get an order fulfillment house. Get Kunaki. I mean, here, here's, here's my first physical product, OK? There it is, top affiliate challenge webinar that I did before the show. Uh, it's, you know, D, it's, it's tips and tricks inside stuff on LPGen, how to really you know, get the most out of it. Uh, anybody that, obviously I'm gonna make you an offer on LPGen, anybody that chooses to buy LPGen, I'll, it's, I sell it for 50 bucks, but you'll get one for free. Um, but you know, I don't ship these. It's Kunaki, kunaki.com. It's a little tricky to figure out, so you might have some trouble if you're kind of a newbie, but physical DVDs. You know, I'm doing it with resale rights products. All right, this is a big deal. I, this product took me four hours to create the whole thing. Whoops, and I just took, pulled the disc out. Not break the thing, shall we? You know, four hours. I bought the product, I have resale rights to it, turn it into a physical product, sell it, boom. Bing, bang, boom. Cool stuff. You know, you really gotta, gotta explore that kind of thing. So that's like hybrid affiliate product owner. You sort of playing both sides of it almost. Um, Let's see here. Uh, obviously, you know LP Gen. Um, you've you've heard about that. It, it's it's awesome. If I do say so myself. If anybody wants a demo of LP Gen, I thought about just being up here and doing a live software demo. And then I was like, I don't know if I'll have internet and will it be reliable? And yeah, better not. So I didn't. But obviously now I know we have internet here and Wi-Fi and everything. So if anybody wants a demo of LP Gen, I'm happy to sit down with you and, and give you one. Um, oh, if anybody here, had, by the way, has a a targeted list of people that are into PPC, landing page, things like that, and you want to participate in a special uh, uh, JV promo I've got coming up in a couple of weeks for LPGen, let me know. I'd be happy to include you in it. Um, obviously, it's got to be it's got to be the right kind of list. It's got to be the right kind of people, because this is not appropriate for a lot of people, because um, it's a kind of an advanced tool. Anyway, um, real quickly, something totally different. Obviously, uh, you know, Ken wanted me to come up here and talk affiliate marketing, and you know, okay, I have LPGen. How many people are really going to be appropriate for that? I don't know. I didn't know how much of a PPC crowd this would really be, but I guessed probably not that many people that would be a, a good fit for. But he has encouraged me, and, and I've heard it repeated again and again and again here, and it really hit me last night in a conversation I was having with Ken and, and a, a gal named Barbara, who is unfortunately not here right now, I don't think, um, that we have a, an obligation, a responsibility to share our talents, share our gifts, get our, our abilities out into the world. And I've been doing that anyway. I mean, if you go to my website, tooltrainer.com, um, I have all kinds of tutorial videos, and I, I love doing them. I spend a ton of time in forums, a ton of time, more than I should, <laughs> in forums, answering people's questions, helping them out. I get emails all the time from people. I don't know, how do I do this? How do I do that? And I found, I, I finally it clicked. I realized I could be building my campaign, sitting there and doing my thing. OK, I'm building another campaign, whatever. Uh, and um, it's like pulling teeth a lot of the time. But somebody sends me an email with a problem saying, I don't know, how, to, how do I do this? I'm like, great, all right, here's what you do. And I realized that, wait a minute, that's what I get all excited about. Wait a minute. I, I, I like doing the analytical side of me, like sitting here and building the campaigns, looking at the numbers, and OK, cool, and, and watching the money come in. That's always nice. But my excitement level goes up when I'm, I'm helping somebody out. So at, at Ken's encouragement, um, I decided, all right, maybe it's time for me to actually, because I've been asked many times by people, do you do you know, personal mentoring? Will you be my mentor? Will you be my coach? I'll pay you, you know, whatever. And I've always said, I appreciate it. I'm flattered, but no. It's just, I, I, no, I don't want to go there. It's a time thing. You know, that's, way too time intensive, and like Ken, I gotta know that I'm gonna get a certain ROI from something if I'm gonna invest my time in it. it just, it's gotta have a reasonable ability to give me that. So uh, I did decide that I wanna work with 10 people in a really unique situation, totally one-on-one, -on -one, not group, nothing, of, I mean one-on-one, -on -one, you and me. I've done this on a very small scale with just an hour at a time with people consulting. I charge $500 an hour to consult. And I keep raising my rate. Actually, it started at 200, and then went to 300, and then went to 500. And then, you know, I just I keep raising it basically because it's not a time efficient thing to do. It's it's really not what I should be investing my time in. But at the same time, people want it. I'd be I'd be a lousy marketer if I wasn't feeding the demand of a market. So um, anyway, true partnership. We can do screen sharing. That's another tool I forgot to share. Actually, Team Viewer, TeamViewer.com. Very very cool. It's free for personal use. Great for screen sharing, working interactively with somebody. Uh, this is how I do my consulting, is we get on the phone and I'm on their computer, on their screen, and we work together on their machine, doing it you know, right in front of them. It's, it's awesome. You get all my resources. If I know there's a PHP script I can code, 
that will get you do something you need done. Fine, I'll I'll whip it up. You know, if if I have it, if I know a commercial tool that does it better, great, I'll point you to it. If, if you know whatever, if I can, if I can make a phone call to somebody, get an answer to something, or get you a connection, or whatever, I'll do it. Um, six two-hour sessions. I found in my consulting that an hour is just enough time to talk about something, but not enough time to do anything, and that frustrated me. Because we get all the ideas and the concepts and everything kind of kind of like, here's what you need. And then it's like, well, OK, the hour's up. And that's what you wanted to pay. So good luck. Go on your way. I, I don't want to do that. So two-hour sessions is what I'm talking about doing so that we can really actually get in there and work on your campaigns and do your stuff. This is uh, the email I got. This is actually just a copy and paste of his exact email. Um, this is a, a fellow mastermind member of mine. And, and a, we mentor each other all the time, a fellow by the name of Raj who just moved out to San Francisco. Yes, so I can finally work with him like in person all the time instead of remotely. This is the email he sent me. It blew my mind. This was after Top Affiliate Challenge. I was chatting with him on the phone. I was telling him how it's amazing what you can accomplish when you drop your life for two weeks and do nothing else. Don't pay your bills. Don't answer your emails. Ignore, I mean, nothing. That's how I was able to pull off 40 grand in two weeks. It was that level of intensity is what it required. And he took off and did this. You know, 5K a day gross, 1 to 2K a day net. Just with deciding, OK, I'm going to do this, what you did. I'm going to just focus and do nothing else. And, and, but Raj is also that kind of guy. He's intense. You know? and, and so if anybody was going to do that, it would be him. But it really made me think. It's like I, this is part of what made me start thinking, gosh, maybe I need to start sharing what I do more with people. Because he sent me that, and I just was kind of, wow. I just thought I was on this silly show, and I did this thing, and you know, whatever. But it had a, you know, again, that word, impact. It had a big impact on him. One to two K a day net profit it, because of what I did? Whoa, OK, cool. Anyway, but Raj is awesome. Don't get me wrong, this is a lot of work. Affiliate marketing is hard work. Uh, it, it is not easy. It, and and this, is, this is not going to be, I, I already know, this is not going to be for probably the vast majority of the people here. If affiliate marketing is not something that you are totally seriously into and passionate about and excited about and gets you your blood pumping, then th this is totally not appropriate for you. Um, there, and, and if you're a newbie, definitely no. You, there are way better courses more suited to that that were available here. There was some really good stuff for a much, much lower price. Because again, I got to, in order to make it worth my time, you know, it would be $6,000 worth of consulting. So that's, that's what I would be charging. And I need to raise that rate because again, people keep asking me to do it. Um, for $45.95, for anybody that this really resonates with, but this has got to resonate with you because I'm going to expect you to do things. We're going to get on the phone two hours. By the end of that two hours, we're going to have a list of action steps. OK, here are the things you need to do over the next week before we talk again. Obviously, you've got questions along the way. You know, buzz me, no problem. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll help you out if I can. But you need to accomplish these things. And uh, if you don't, well, I mean, I guess I shouldn't let it bother me. I, was, you know, I really I won't be very happy, but I, I shouldn't let it affect me. But I, I'm just not happy when people don't follow through on the things that I know will, will, will get them what they need. So I've never done this before at all. Um, this is totally unique. $45.95, or I'll do, oh, and also the, the one-time payment, uh, I'll include LPGen. You'll get a free copy of LPGen, so we can, if you want to get into PPC, I can help get you there. Uh, or three payments of $15.95 every two weeks. That is my first and only ever offer of doing personal mentoring, personal coaching, although I've been asked many times. Um, so for Ken, and you know, hearing again and again, you know, we got a responsibility to, to share what we can do. That really has hit me this weekend. It's really made me think, OK, I need to, I keep thinking I want to do all these things. Oh, yeah, I'll do some more webinars, but I need, to, I need to do it. I need to really, really do it, because there's a whole lot more people that can be affected by it and helped by it than, than I ever really realized. So. Uh, I'll be around. Uh, obviously, that, that's basically it. I mean, if you want to, to really be able to take affiliate marketing maybe where you haven't been able to, uh, you know, you want to really blow it out, you want to get, get beyond the, the sort of, I'd say, advanced beginner stage, I'd say this is for like advanced beginners to intermediate and up. Um, I will be, would be thrilled to work with, with any one of you uh, on this. But like I said, this needs to really resonate with you. The, you know, I, although, I mean, I suppose if anybody just wanted a big block of consulting time from me, for forty-five ninety-five, and you want to talk about anything, I guess, OK, sure. Yeah, why not? Consulting is consulting. I'd be happy to work with anybody. But this is, this is the intent here is affiliate marketing. So I'll be around. If anybody has any more questions, obviously, I couldn't even cram a fraction of what I wanted to in this. I removed so much stuff, and I still went over. So uh, I'm here. If you want demos of LPGen or you want to talk to me about anything, any questions. Uh, oh, I don't even think I mentioned LPGen uh, is five ninety-seven at my website. That's what it sells for to anybody who just goes to my website. I'm making it available here for three ninety-seven. So if you do PPC or really want to and you come talk to me about it, 
I suggest you get it today because it's the last day and, uh, and save yourself 397. So if you're interested in that, um, Michelle's got forms or obviously come see me. I will be around. I'd be more than happy to talk to any of you about what I can do to, to help you out. So there you have it. Thank you, Jonathan. Wow. <laughs> Whose head is spinning with all those resources? And I wow. have so many. Oh. <laughs> nice job. Unbelievable. Wow.